Hello, welcome to part two of the Windows Autopilot Overview video series. In this session, we'll take a closer look at the IT Pro's experiences with Windows Autopilot. Now that we have covered the Windows Autopilot fundamentals, let's take a closer look at the IT Pro's experiences with Windows Autopilot. There are a few important items that must be determined before you can get started on your Windows Autopilot configuration, starting with which scenarios you plan to leverage. For example, user enrollment for one-to-one -one student devices, teacher or staff scenarios, or bulk enrollment for shared student scenarios or kiosk devices. Would these devices be joined directly into Azure Active Directory, or would they continue to be joined to a local Active Directory and later register into Azure Active Directory? What is the desired end user experience for completing the initial device setup during the out of box experience? Is the expectation that devices will be fully configured when end users sign in for the first time? Or will they continue to get apps and policies after they sign in? Is there a specific hardware or OS requirement for achieving each of these use cases that you have defined? For example, if we intend to use self deploying or pre provisioned deployment modes of Windows Autopilot, Devices must support TPM 2.0 and hardware attestation. Once all of these questions have been answered, you can then begin the process of configuring both Windows Autopilot and Microsoft Intune to align with your desired requirements in order to get these devices ready for productive use. All of the Intune and Autopilot configurations are to be done from the Microsoft Endpoint Manager console which will in turn interact with both the Windows Autopilot and Microsoft Intune cloud services to enable the appropriate configurations based on what you've configured to the portal. The Enrollment Status Page, or ESP, can be used during the Windows Autopilot workflow to track the installation of applications, security policies, certificate, and network connections. For devices that went through the Windows Autopilot pre-deployment process, the ESP enables a consistent end user experience by ensuring that all of the required apps and policies are immediately available after users sign into their devices for the very first time. It offers the ability to block users from getting to their desktops until critical apps are installed. This can be quite helpful for autopilot scenarios where applications are not pre-cached, but you still want to ensure that important applications are installed before end users begin to use their devices. For example, to ensure content filtering software or language packs are installed. ESP can be configured to track and install applications and policies with every user that signs into their devices, or it can be restricted to only be shown during the out-of-box experience. It can also specify what actions users can perform in the event that the device setup failed. ESP has two main evaluation phases, one for the device and one for the user. During the device evaluation phase, it completes the MDM enrollment, it evaluates policies and apps that are targeted to the device, which is covered under the device preparation and device setup steps of the process. During the user evaluation phase, it tracks any policies and apps that are targeted to the end user before it gets to the desktop under the account setup step. The ESP can be configured in the Microsoft Endpoint Manager under the Windows Enrollment section, under Enrollment Status Page, the default policy applies to all users, but custom policies can be targeted to both users and devices. We'll be covering a few demos which leverages ESP throughout this session. Now let's take a look at the bulk enrollment option of Windows Autopilot with self-deploy mode. It is an ideal option for shared devices commonly used in early grades, as well as kiosk scenarios. When used with a wired connection, it provides a zero-touch provisioning experience for the IT pros. And since it does not require end-user authentication to complete provisioning, it simplifies the initial device setup experience for the end-user. Now let's take a look at the enrollment in practice. So now the device is starting up and because the device is hardwired, you no longer need to configure the region or the keyboard and the device automatically loads the autopilot self-deploying mode profile. 
So once the autopilot profile has been loaded, we now expect to move on to the enrollment status page of the process, which we talked about earlier. In the device preparation, the device will get MDM enrolled to hardware attestation. In the device setup stage, it will process any policies and applications that are targeted to the device. Once that's completed, the user should now have all of the applications required for the productive use of the device. And the user is now ready to begin logging in to the device. So in this case, Allison can then quickly sign in to the device. Once the user is signed in, uh, it should be able to have all of the policies and applications that were configured in Microsoft Intune. We have now seen the IT Pro's experience with the self-deploying mode of Windows Autopilot. In this demo, I'll walk you through the end-to-end -end flow for configuring a Windows Autopilot user-driven profile with the pre-provisioned deployment option enabled to allow for pre-caching of apps and policies. We'll begin by creating an Azure AD dynamic group that pulls in all of the devices with a specific group tag that have been registered to the Autopilot service to help automate the process. We'll then create, deploy, and assign a user-driven profile to it. We'll then finish by importing a test device using the CSV containing the hardware hash information. We're going to start the Windows Autopilot configuration process by going to the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. And we're going to begin by creating an Azure AD dynamic group that pulls in all of the devices that are registering to Autopilot with a specific group tag. In our case, it's going to be called Workshop. But in your case, it could be anything that differentiates those devices. For example, student devices, or even more specific, middle school devices, and elementary school devices, or teacher devices. So we're going to go to Groups, create a new group. We're going to call it AP Devices Workshop. This is going to be a dynamic device group. We're going to add a dynamic query. And this is where it can get a little complicated. To help us with the group creation, we're going to be leveraging the information that's contained in our documentation. So if we go to our documentation around enrolling Windows devices in Intune by using Windows Autopilot and scroll down, we're going to have some suggestions on how to create dynamic groups in Azure AD. For example, you can create a dynamic group containing all autopilot devices, or you can create a dynamic group with devices containing a specific group tag, which is what we want. And you can also create a dynamic group containing only devices that were part of the same purchase order ID. So we're going to go ahead and leverage this example here to create our group. So we're going to copy. And we can now use the edit option to go ahead and paste the example provided. And we're going to modify the example here to reflect what we want, which is to look for the tag called workshop. OK, so we'll click, click OK, select Save. And now we are ready to create the group. So this should automate the process of configuring autopilot in the future so as devices are added into the autopilot service by oem and partners the devices can then flow into the respective groups which will then be used for the assignment of the autopilot profile as well so now let's move forward with creating the autopilot profile so we can then assign this specific group that we just created to that specific autopilot profile so for that, we're going to go to Devices, Windows, Windows Enrollment, Deployment Profiles. We're going to create a new profile. It's going to be a Windows PC profile. We're going to name this profile AP User Driven. As you can see, one of the options you can see right away is the option to convert all target devices to autopilot. This can be quite handy. If you already have devices into Intune, 
uh, but you would like to convert them into autopilot devices, you can simply select that option and Intune will pick up the information required to convert those devices as long as they are targeted with this specific autopilot profile. So we're gonna go ahead and choose yes and click next. For this specific profile, I'm going to be creating a user-driven profile for a modern cloud-only scenario. So devices will be Azure AD joined. And I'm going to be hiding all of the out-of-box experience options for the end user to make that experience much more simplified. The user is gonna to continue to be a standard, but I'm going to enable the wide glove or the pre-provisioned deployment option so that I can pre-cache some applications and policies prior to shipping the devices uh, to end users. I'm gonna keep the default option of operating system default for language, and I'm going to have the keyboard automatically selected if the device is hardwired. And also, I'm going to be selecting the a device name template option for this specific profile so that I can also quickly identify the devices that had this specific profile assigned. So we're just gonna call this AP dash, and I'm going to use the serial number option as a suffix. So now that I'm good with the option selected, I'm gonna say next, and I am going to now assign this profile to the group that we just created. So I'm going to do selected groups and select the AP devices workshop that we just created, select okay, and click next. All I'm gonna to need to do here is to ensure that the information displayed matches my intended behavior and it does look good. I'm gonna say create. Now I have an autopilot profile created and deployed to the group that we just created. So the final step here would be to simulate importing a device uh, into the autopilot service so that the devices can then flow into the autopilot profile that we just created. For that, we're gonna go back to Windows. We're gonna click on devices and we're gonna choose the CSV option for importing this device. So we click import, select the file that we want to import, which in this case is this AP demo. And I'm just gonna quickly show you the content of this file, which is not really that impressive here, but you'll be able to see that it will contain the device serial number. We're going to have the hardware hash, which is this long string that you see below, and you have the group tag, which in this case, you can see that it's being set to workshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this here. I'm going to go ahead and select this device, and I'm going to import it. This process is going to take some time to take place, so I just wanted to quickly show you what the outcome of this would be. As you can see, I already have some devices that were previously imported, and you can see that those devices have a specific group tag set, uh, in this case, 20001 students, and you can see that the profile has been successfully assigned, and if you select it, you'll be able to verify uh, the group tag that has been set, you've been able to determine which profile this uh, device was assigned to, in this case, it was a user-driven profile, and you see both the Azure AD Device Association, and if the device has been enrolled, you'll also be able to see the Intune Device Association here. And you can also, if you did not choose the option of having a device name template, you can also manually set the device name right from here. So with this, we now have the entire process end-to-end -end for configuring a user-driven profile with autopilot where devices are now ready to be imported by OEM and partners, and they would directly flow into the respective autopilot profiles that you have created in the Microsoft Endpoint Manager portal. This is the end of module 6.5, Windows Autopilot for the IT pros. In the next session, we'll take a closer look at the experiences for OEMs and partners.